Hello everyone, Logan ISL here, and welcome back to another video. A lot of us JTO players sit and only think of ourselves, while newer players are struggling and in confusion of the game's mechanics. That's what I'm going to try and fix today. I'm going to help out our new players try and get to ring 4 of the game. I'm going to explain everything in detail as much as possible. You might be watching this video, and simply might be stuck further in the game and want some help, or just a curious seasoned veteran to see what I have to say. You could also be new to the game and want to understand what the heck is going on. Don't worry! Today I'm going to help and get you to Ring 4. Where there, I will give you some additional tips and by then, you will hopefully be fully dependent to try and figure out where to go and what towers to do. Let's sit down and let me explain some things and aspects of the game before we even go into it. So that intro might have been overwhelming for new players as I used a lot of the game's terminology and such. So what the heck is going on? Well, let me take everything down step by step and try to explain everything to you. The way this game works is that there are different areas of the game where there are a certain number of obbies, typically around 12 or so. After you beat so many obbies in each of the areas, you can unlock new areas and go further down the game. In this case though, the obbies are known as a tower obby. What these obbies are is a massive 100 by 1000 by 100 box where there are no checkpoints at all. Where you fall is where you catch yourself. Meaning unlike difficulty chart obbies or your typical escape the blank obbies, these towers have no hand trying to help you at all. It's all about consistency and knowledge. This obby type is not for everyone. It takes a ton of time and practice to get somewhere in this game. This is a game for the typical obbyist who wishes to go a little further out of their skill range. I wouldn't consider this as a casual game. These towers are really long. And the early game towers are typically not that long, about 5 to 8 minutes without falling at a normal pace. However, the further down you go, the longer towers get, the more new and modern they get, meaning not only the difficulty goes up, so do the towers mechanics and tricks to try and get you to fall down. It's very intimidating, but it will likely take you a lot of time to get used to this type of obby and get used to not getting frustrated losing 5 minutes of progress to an unfair jump. For a JTO player, this is just a normal occurrence. I don't want to scare you off from trying this game. In fact, it's very fun and rewarding once you get further down the game and complete harder towers. It's just something to think about. This game is not for a casual player. It's about more of a hardcore side and casual users who want to go up in a step. Now that you understand what the game is about and what to expect going in, it's time for some gameplay. For this video as well, I'm going to be doing this on a completely fresh account so that you guys could um, be able to experience this with me so you guys know what to expect and stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, head into the game itself. And uh, let's go ahead and do some gameplay. So yeah, when you first join in the game, you will get a You Played the Game award and unfortunately, this game has a pretty terrible um, thing for beginners. When you first join the game, you'll be sent into this very, very, very long loading screen. It takes around a minute or two. It could take you even longer if you have a worse internet connection. This is because um, the way that the game used to handle data was by badges. It would check, do you have this badge? Yes, okay, you get this. Now it doesn't do that anymore. It does it with data stores. So what this check is for is that it's checking to make sure that you don't have badges from the old system and if it does it's converting them into the new system it's really annoying it means you're gonna have to sit in this loading screen for a while this loading bar will get to about here then it will stop for a while then it'll get to around here and uh, stop for a while again so just sit here and wait until this loading is finished Alright, so when you first enter the game, you are going to be sent into this screen. So what the heck is this? Well, this is called the Ring Select. And, well, your Ring Select might look a little bit different than mine. There might be a whole other uh, tower sitting here, or there could be nothing here, and there's no music, or the music can be changed. Don't worry about that. Those are just Ring Select secrets, so you don't really need to worry about them. So, this is where you will choose which area of the game you want to go. How you navigate the ring select is pretty simple. If you're on PC, you can press A and D to select a round. You press D if you want to go further down, so I'm pressing D, it sends me to one ring above. 
Or if you want to go back, you press A. And if you're on PC and or mobile and other devices, you can just click these arrows here and it will also send you over down a ring as well. Those of you with a clever eye might have noticed there's actually a second world. If you click it or press E, it'll take you into the second world. I warn you, do not go into these extra worlds. I heavily recommend you don't do it. The reason is because if you look, let's head to rings, you have like 13 towers, 9 towers, 11 towers, 12, 12, 12, 13. So like around 12, 13, here it's 16, 14, 16, 15. These, this second world has a lot more towers and because of this, the requirements are a lot harder. So because of this, it's going to be way more difficult for you to progress. There's also less content and the towers are way newer in these, um, new areas, so these have mechanics and stuff that you are not very much used to yet. So I HIGHLY recommend that you don't touch the second world until you get to around uh, Ring 5. But you may also notice there are requ this is the uh, requirements section. This is what you need to do in order to unlock the new area. So in order for us to get to Ring 2, we need to beat 4 towers in World 1 and beat a hard difficulty tower in World 1. Fear not, we'll get you through this. So, we're gonna head to ring one. What we need to do in order to enter it is, um, we either click the enter button, we can press the uh, space key, I believe the enter key works. Yes, the enter key does work. Upon doing that, you will be teleported into ring one. So, here we are, this is the first ring. I load in really quickly because I have a good connection. You might not get put in that quick. So, this is what the ring looks like. So before we even do this anything, I want to explain to you what you expect and what you'll see in each of these areas. So this is the lobby that you'll always be spawned in here when you go into a ring and such. If you played this game recently when I upload this video and you hear that bell sound, that's because one of the new Christmas items that recently came out does that and they haven't fixed that. So be aware you might hear some bells while you play this. This explains what the uh, game is like and stuff. Don't worry about it. I'll get you through it. So each ring has towers, viewing area, cat therapy, and credits pretty much. So in the viewing area, if you're new to the new ring and stuff and you want to see what it's like, you can take a look at it. As you can see, these suckers look very intimidating. This guy even looks a little weird compared to the rest of them. That guy is extremely tall. Don't worry. We'll go through these and I'll explain to you what to do and such in order to complete them. You can also go to Juke's other game, which I don't recommend it, but go around and such. There's also Cat Therapy. You typically won't go in these three areas at all unless you're doing a secret or something. Um, won't go too much into detail. There is a secret in here you'll do, but you could come here and relax and look at the cute cats, but trust me, you're coming in here to mainly do secrets. And yes, there are secret areas and stuff that this game has. Same with credits. You're not going to be typically in here to see, oh, this guy has a bigger ego than this one. You're not going to be in here for that. You're typically are in here because of secrets. And yeah, there are secrets in this uh, room as well. This game does have pretty much secrets in every area of the game that you can look for. So feel, feel free to um, look for some information and have a good laugh. But that's beside the point. We're here to do some towers. So... You'll see these uh, green triangles trying to lead to you into this first tower, but before we do, what the heck is this? Why is it T O A S T? T O R C O. What is this? Well, this is the difficulty chart. If you played a difficulty chart, Obby, this is where it comes from. So this will tell you what, and for every ring and area, it's the exact same, what the difficulties are. It goes from easy all the way up to catastrophic. And this tells you how hard each tower is in respective to their difficulties. So you might be asking, how do I know what tower is what? Well, let me give you an example. The first tower is Tower of Annoyingly Simple Trials. You take the acronym T-O-A-S-T, -T, TOAST, ta-da! TOAST is very low easy. So that's how you know how hard something is before you even go into it. However, don't fully trust this difficulty chart because there are some times where it can be wrong. Looking at you, T.O.K., but we'll talk about that later. One common mistake beginners will do is they're like, Oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'm such a pro. I've done obbies for years. I'm going to go ahead and go into the tower of truth. No, 
Don't do this to yourself. This is way above your skill range. This is going to be very intimidating to you. And it's only going to make you get even more worried and stuff about this game. Don't even worry about the hard harder towers. You only need to be one remorseless tower by when you get to rank 9. And even then, the game will ease you into a tower of this difficulty. So please, do not do this to yourself. It is not something you want to do. So yeah, we're going to head into the tutorial tower, which is the annoying list of the trials recommended for beginners. So yeah, this tower has lots of signs. It's a tutorial tower. It tells you what everything does. Read these carefully. I'll also be um, showing you some techniques and stuff um, while we're going. So yeah, do be aware of that. I'm going to be sharing my techniques and stuff and sharing you um, some help and stuff that might um, be able to be used to your advantage. So yeah, the first thing you're going to come up to that might confuse you is this button. It says, this is a button, press it to activate platforms that are the same color. Look at the ceiling, it will help you. So you might be trying to go into this button and notice that there is a wall here. If you're not, look at the ceiling, you'll see this green brick. Walk over, and you're able to press the button, so do be aware of that. Make sure you read every sign to figure out what things do. It will be very helpful, and if you ever are struggling on something and need some help, I do have videos for each of the towers and stuff I'm going to go over in this tutorial in the description below. Just skip through to where you are and you'll be able to see how to do that jump. Alright, at the beginning of the second floor here, I'll explain that in a little bit. You'll get to this sign that says you'll need to backtrack. Don't do this, just simply drop back down here. It's way quicker than going back on the conveyors and stuff. And then just go ahead and uh, do this pushing platform again. Don't worry about that, you don't need to um, go ahead and backtrack if you don't want to. But, once you press all the buttons, you are able to go in here. So now you might be going, oh gosh, this area is a little bit tight and stuff. It's really hard to navigate in here, because it's all smushed, like, oh, I just hit my head there. Well, here's a little trick I have for you. Press escape, and go into settings, if you are on PC, and you will notice it says shift lock switch. Turn this on. If you're on mobile, there is already a shift lock uh, looking button. I'll have a uh, picture on screen to show you of where it is. And unfortunately, console does not have shift lock switch. It's a really big problem. So if you are playing this on console, do be aware of that. But once you do that, if you're on mobile, tap the shift lock thing. And oh yeah, and shift on mobile, you don't need to go into settings. It's ingrained to the game. When you, if you're on PC though, and mobile, tap it. This happens. What the heck is this? Well, this is the shift lock mode, and you will use this a lot. So what it does is it moves your camera over to the side, but most importantly, notice how wherever my mouse is, is where I am looking at. So instead of holding right click, and you see how my character's moving around, no, you're in direct control now of where your character looks at. It'll take you some time to get used to this weird camera, but trust me, it'll be way easier to maneuver your way through here. You won't have to deal with your character's rotation and stuff. This should be way easier. Don't worry about it. Make sure before you even go into obstacles, you read the signs. A great example is shover platforms. Because if you get hit by this, you won't get pushed off and flung around. And you can lose all your progress on this easily. So make sure you're reading everything before you attempt something, just in case it's something that could be a progress ender if you don't know what you're doing, like that. Alright, so the next thing you might get confused of is when you get to this maze, where do I go? Fear not! This tower is very friendly and it tells you exactly where to go with these two green bricks. You follow them, you progress. Simple as that. So, this sign says jumps like this can lead to falls if you're not careful enough. If you try this jump, you'll notice it's very easy, but fear this. This jump is really easy, but you will see jumps in towers, especially earlier in the game, that try and mess with you. That you'll see a jump that doesn't look like it's too far, but in reality, it's actually a long and annoying jump to land on. What you do is you get towards the edge like I am, look 90 degrees away from where you're landing. So I'm looking 90 degrees to the left. It doesn't matter if you're looking this way. And then... You hold W and towards the edge, press space. Just like that. 
you'll get a very long jump and you'll be able to land those types of jumps with absolutely no problem. Depending on how long it is, you might need to go closer to the edge or time it later, so just do be aware of that. However, you won't really need to worry about those types of jumps until way later on in the game. When you get to this jump pad, um, this might be confusing. Personally, what I recommend you do is you jump onto the middle of it and then just go ahead and move on. That first one is in quite a weird spot, so do be careful. Now, you may notice that there are some secret routes in Toast. Like, for example, you will notice that there is this um, invisible, well, not, it's a kind of like transparent pathway. You can take this and make it up. It's like, oh yeah, great idea, right? No, no, I don't recommend you do that. Because you want to go in here and I'm going to teach you something. These are like, oh, this is easy. Go ahead and not worry about it. No, this is actually something you need to learn. If you're on mobile, this technique is not going to work. Just stick to the middle in first person. However, if you're on PC, you'll have this nice little cursor to help you. Oh, but if you're on mobile, I guess you could use the shift block. But For this technique, this is a tightrope. You'll see these commonly in towers. Very common um, type of obstacle. Go in the first person like I am now. And notice that my cursor is on the tightrope. For example, as you see, now my cursor is off the tightrope. If this happens, you need to go ahead and move your mouse and tilt over. Be very careful of that. Basically, the rule of thumb is, uh-oh, my cursor's off. Reposition myself. Alright, so you might see this. Uh, well, actually, you will if you make it here. Well, um, this is an outside part. And yeah, this is very easy. But trust me, if you fall on these outside sections, unless there is another outside section below you, your run is over. Here's another outside section, you fail this, your run's over. So yeah, be very careful. Whenever you come out and coming blah. Whenever you come to an outside section in a tower, make sure you keep your guard high. But after the outside section, you'll come to this balloon. Common mistake that players do. Oops, I pressed space right away. Nah -uh 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 -uh. Don't do that. Do not press space until you're at the very end of something. So for this balloon, it's very simple. Literally just hold forward. And, ta-da! If you ever are on a balloon, though, that um, won't let you go, press space and you, it will go ahead and hopefully un, um, let you get out of it. It will pop it. So you will notice when you get to here now that all of a sudden everything is dark. Traverse these parts in the first person. Would highly recommend you do it in first person. Everything's closer to you, so you will be able to see what's going on. Now, be aware of this. Whenever you come to a 4x4 like this, that's transparent, keep your eye out for this thing. This is a moving platform, and it moves around. Please don't go ahead and go, uh, uh, jump on it. Uh-oh, I fell through it. Unless there's a clear indication that there's something else that you need to do, Look for that thing, because you will fall through it. It's not cool. Alright, once when you go up this slider, you'll go into the advanced tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do these things, but don't try. you don't need to try these yourself. You can just completely skip this advanced tutorial if you want. But I'm going to show you how to do these without the signs explaining it. So what you do for, um, this is called a trust walk, pretty much. What you do is you get to the top, go in first person, or what everybody does, go into shift lock, and then just hold the direction that you need to walk on. As long as you're at the very top, like this, boom. Just hold the key and direction you want to go, and you'll be able to go right through, no problem. So this is a wraparound. It doesn't tell you this, but the way you do wraparounds, I highly recommend it. I know most people go like this, or they do this, or um, they'll do this. Get in the habit of doing wraparounds like this, like the way I'm doing it now. You're going to fail this probably a few times until you get used to it, but these wraparounds can get 10 studs thick. No joke. So you will need to do wraparounds like this in the future. So get used to that nice motion, parabolic motion of going through wraparounds like this. So, this is a corner clip. You'll see these very commonly um, later in the game. This will be used to like separate sections and stuff. Very easy glitch. Probably the second easiest to learn once you get it down. Come up to a corner like this. Notice how I'm looking into the corner. Now I'm out of shift lock. I'm going to look the opposite way and then press shift. I will clip through the wall. It might take you a few attempts, 
But, like that, see, it didn't work. You can look at it straight like this sometimes and you'll be able to clip through it. It really depends. But, boom. You'll be able to clip through the wall. Obviously, if you don't want to do this, you can just skip over it. Now for the glitch you probably won't see at all unless you're playing Harder Towers or you're doing a skip. This is a wall hop. This is really hard. I don't know why this is wall hugging. It's wall hopping. So what you do is if you're on mobile, you have to go into... You have to go into shift lock, hold W and space, and flick in between the two parts. If you're on PC, though, you are in luck. You have alignment keys. You have the, um, right next to the M key, you have the greater and less than keys. And if you press them, you will notice that your camera does this. So, how it works is you'll jump, hold W in space, and once when your leg gets right in between these two parts, you press less than, then greater than. Very quickly, like this. And then, you're able to wall hop. It's a very hard technique. You can try it if you want, but I highly recommend you don't... You, you, you can try it, but you won't need this. I really can't think of a tower that requires an actual wall hopping section that you need to worry about. At most that you'll see is a vertical wall hop like this over a net. And typically, when this does happen, you can just, just spam and you can get up. Don't worry about it. Alright, so here it says there is one final challenge. There is a shortcut you can take along this path. Can you find it? If you want to, you can do this outside section, which has some speed, and you don't have to worry about failing. Or, you can do the secret path. If you're curious what it is, it's these three studs right here. It's an invisible path. Remember those greater and less than keys I showed you from before? Yeah, those are very useful. You can just go ahead and align like I just did. You press comma, period, greater than, less than, or whatever. Get straight like I am, then you can just walk. Hold W. You don't even need to worry about falling off. You'll make it to the other side exactly where you started. And then it'll say right here, it will teleport you to the end. Tap W when you get near the end of this. And boom! You beat the tower! It says you reached the end. So then you'll climb up this ladder, and you'll notice that there's this nice sprinkly pad here. This is the wind pad that signifies the end of a tower. So you touch it. And it takes you in this wind room, and whoa, what just happened here? Let me just dissect what happened to you. <laughs> so, basically, there's a nice feature in this game called, um, cos there's basically cosmetics. So if you head in this menu and head into cosmetics, you will notice that there is trails and auras, and they are locked by progression. Currently, the only trails that there are, are than um, events, ones, and stuff, are the difficulty trails. And or as you typically get after beating so many towers. So because you beat your first tower, you got the small sparkles aura, and because you beat an easy difficulty tower, you got the easy trail. So if you clip them, your character looks like this. You can barely see the easy trail, barely see it. So yeah, you can play with those if you want, but typically most people don't. If you find a player with some really annoying cosmetics, you can go into the settings here and use invisible players, or you can just disable cosmetics entirely. You don't really need to worry about that. Also, this is something I should have said right in the beginning. If you are having lag inside of the ring, you can turn on canister mode. This takes out the parts from inside towers you are not in, which can save your computer's memory. So if you are having lag issues, use canister mode. Um, quick reset delay, that's something I'll talk about here in a second. Also, if you got someone with the annoying boombox you can switch that as well you can go in there and take a look here are some game passes and stuff this is pretty much what i've already told you about this is if you have items you can disable them if you want but yeah that's pretty much what that's like but when you go ahead and beat a tower you are teleported to a wind room this is the wind one ring room ring room <laughs> wind room you can read that it's like a nice little motivational message this is where you go when you beat a tower and you then got one point. You need four points in order to head into Ring 2 as long as well as a hard difficulty thing. So do be aware of that. We can shift lock and uh, take a look where you are. As you can see, we're um, pretty far away from the ring. But no worries. So once you're done, you can take the green brick and uh, go back to spawn. It'll teleport you right back. So... Let me go ahead and show you a neat trick. Um, so, say you fell from the bottom of a tower and... Ah, uh, no! So, what happens? 
You might fall outside the tower. You might, then you'll reset. No, you don't need to do that. If you hold R, or if you're on mobile, menu, restart, and then you can click this. It restarts your run. Boom. And it resets the timer and such. Or you can hold R. You'll get this restarting thing. And it'll restart your run as well. You can switch how long it takes in here. Maybe you want to be sure that you won't reset. Well, now it's at 10 seconds and it'll take a very long time. Or you're just impatient and you can select it to instant. Be very careful if you select it to instant. Because if you tap the R key, your run is over. Do you know all of your button progress on the tower would be removed and all like your progress in general. So you won't have that saved. So if you have buttons and such and fall to the bottom of the tower, don't restart. Personally, I keep it at one second, but if if you really want to be sure, keep it at the default three. But if you ever want to go to a different tower, unfortunately you have no choice but to just reset your character. But As you notice, when you come in here next time, this black will turn green, and this line will turn green. Because um, I have not rejoined, this won't turn green. But if you ever come into a case where you need to like go to a different ring, or you want to go to a different area of the game, which you won't have to worry about this right now, but later on when you have multiple areas unlocked, you will. This is a nice little tool. You won't have to. You don't have to rejoin the game. Go to menu, return to hub confirm when you click confirm it'll take a while if you're in a laggy server it'll take even longer and boom i'm right back in the ring select and because i already went through that batch check i got loaded in instantly but if you are on a worse network connection it might take you a little bit so we aren't going anywhere else we'll just head right back into ring one and people are having fun with the christmas items in this server but yeah because i rejoined now look the plaque is is green. This signifies that you've beaten the tower, and this is also green. So yeah, if you ever come into a ring, it's like, oh, have I beaten this yet? You can look at the difficulty chart, or you look for this plaque to be green. If that's the case, you've beaten it. Don't try it again, unless you want to rebeat it. So yeah, if you look at the difficulty chart, you you might notice that the next tower we have to do is T O A. This Tower of Anger. This is the second tower in the game. It's also easy difficulty, but it's a little trickier than Toast. Let's go ahead and take a look, and um, I'll go ahead and once again with Toast, point out some areas of concern that might um, be annoying. Once again, if you're stuck at a certain part that I have not mentioned in this video, there is a Tower of Anger video in the description if you want to see it. So right away in Tower of Anger, you're going to get to this part, which is going to be really hard for you at first. Simply what I recommend you do is try to do this fast if you can, but you're a new player, you don't know the physics yet. Don't try and do this really fast. Get to the edge of these, so let me explain first of all what's your issue. As you can tell, your head is getting hit. So you're not going to be able to get a nice big jump like you're used to. So simply get to the edge and press space. See, so you got to the edge, press space, edge, space, edge, space, edge, space. Then you get here, time it, get out, head in the middle of this truss. And you'll be able to climb all the way up. These will swing around and stuff. If these get out of control, once again, restart your run. There's no buttons in this tower. Don't have to worry about that. Or you can hold R from earlier. When it comes to this part, don't go to the left. Go to the right here and you'll be put into this room. So this area is really hard. Once again, like the toast room, you shift lock through here. So, just take your time, take it easy, use your nice camera mobility, and when you get here to this jump, yeah, that this area is kind of annoying. Even for me, I sometimes have issues in this part. But when you... Wow, I'm so bad. When you get in here, once you get to this one, you can, don't jump to that last one because you'll hit your head. Just jump and tilt. Land on here, then you'll get out. Now, you can go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and do this normally. Whack your head and do that. Or, if you feel like a spicy god, go ahead and you can land on this um, transparent skip. Jump to here and continue on. Also, get used to those one stud poles. You will see them a lot in towers. Get used to them. When you get to here, push against the wall. Go in the first person, look forward. Then press space and then W. 
you don't you'll get right on this chest and you won't have to walk around and do all that funky weird gameplay don't do that one tip i always give players is be aware of your surroundings you will notice that you will start to get a habit where you'll jump around and go Woo! but be careful i'm jumping around yeah uh oh all of a sudden this is here and my muscle memory can get screwed up maybe the peak of my jump is like that and i can get pushed be aware of your surroundings. Don't mess around. You need to make sure you know where you are and what's around you. Because if there's a shover platform like right there ready to go ahead and shove you, that could be the end of your run. So be very careful. But another issue is right here. You're going to go ahead and... Uh oh, I'm trapped. Well, if you get in this position, what you can do is you hold W and then just flick your way out. But the way you're supposed to do this jump is you go at an angle like this, recommend you do it in shift lock, and then jump out like that. Now here, space W. Simple like that. Space W. Space W. You press space, then W. Or, if you want to make matters even quicker, treat these like a head hitter jump. I know they call them head hitter jumps. It's confusing because the other jump, like I showed you at the beginning, is head hitter jump as well. I call these tower jumps. Go back. So let me explain. Hold S, get to where you want to jump. Then, space, W. So basically, that space, W thing, just with S added into it. Like that. You'll see those jumps a lot as well. Get used to them. Another thing you might notice throughout your stay in JTO is these blue messages in chat. You'll see that this guy has beaten Hopeless Hell. These are soul-crushing difficulty um, tower wins. So you might notice, uh, have noticed at the difficulty chart earlier that there was the um the four difficulties on top that were um condensed those are the soul crushing difficulties there are three blue ones and then a white one at the very top those are the sc difficulties whenever someone beats a tower of that difficulty it displays the wind message globally hopeless hell is not in this ring but you will still see it but however all non-sc towers you'll only see them by your server like this Naruto, this I don't know where he went. Okay, he just went burr. But basically, these are the wins in your server. So do be aware of that. You might see towers that you aren't familiar with. That is just SCs. So when you get to here, once again, be aware of your surroundings. It's this. Just simply walk across that. You can walk forward. Don't jump because that can happen. Great example of why to be aware of your surroundings. Now, when you get to hear this part of the tower might be intimidating, just pretend that there isn't anything here. Press space, you'll land on the staircase, and then just head up. Now here, this is a part that some new players fall on. Don't worry about it. If you go in the middle here, you'll notice that you'll just be pushed here. If you go into here, then yeah, you can't get pushed off. But on the odd-numbered conveyors, you do get pushed in the middle. So what I do personally is get in the middle and just go quick. Just go very quick. Hold. What I do is I hold space and just tap W. So I'm holding space and just tapping W across. Doing that, you'll be pretty quick through here. And you won't need to worry about those conveyors shoving you off. But here's another thing you need to be careful of. Trusses. When you're in a climbing animation like this and you press space, you go backwards. This is a problem if you um, are in a climbing animation and you don't expect it. Because if there is nothing behind you, well, guess what? You're falling. If there was nothing behind me, I would have fallen very far down there. So be very careful that when you jump, you are not any climbing animation on a truss. Here's a great example. If I press jump here, I would be falling down. Be very careful of the climbing animation. Now these spinners might be taunting at you. Don't worry about it. Just sit on the ends and take it easy. But when you get to here, these are the wraparounds. Once again, please. I know it might be frustrating for you. Do it this way. It might take you a bit to learn and stuff, but it will make longer wraparounds and stuff way easier later. So, please, make your um, future easier and just go ahead and wrap around these like the normal players do. Hold the, so hold the direction key, in this case A, get to the edge, press space, rotate your camera. Just like this. But right after those wraparounds, um, well, you get to this part. 
Don't worry about this. This is just like weird decorations. Only in this tower. I don't know why this part is there, but don't worry about that. So now, you get to this part. You're going to hold W and try and jump, and you are noticing that you're going to slide around. Whenever you hold W and jump at a wall, it moves your character around. Do not do this, because if that happens, and, well, you're on the right side and it pushes you right, well, you can figure out what happens to you. What you do is shift W, like I just did. Shift W. Do it quickly. Shift W. Learn the timing for it. It'll take you some time. It'll take you multiple tries, but you'll be able to do this pretty consistently, like I'm doing. So yeah, shift W. It's your best friend. Alright, so coming up here is what is, in my opinion, the worst part of this tower. This part. You might go, okay, let me just jump. Oh, this is in my way. Yeah, it is. If you try to jump from here to here, well, it's not going to end well. Look what happens. So... You got two options. You can do this, Tetney. So basically what you do is go into first person, get a little bit to the right of this one side. See how my cursor is like a little bit to the right? Press space, nothing else. Notice I got in the climbing animation. And then press, go ahead and tap, tap W and then rotate yourself on there. Or you can do what, um, most players don't do this, but I find this easier, is do, that, do it like a wraparound. Like those wraparounds down there, just treat it like that, except it's longer and stuff like that. But once you do that, just be careful of the head hitter there. And you're on this final maze section. Um, it's fairly simple, but it can go ahead and uh, mess with you. Uh, for example, I'll get right to the part I'm talking about. You get to here. What most people do is they'll go left, and then left again, and then uh-oh. What's, what's, what's up here? I can't get up. Well, the trick is you actually go to the right. Even though this jump doesn't look possible, do that shift W technique from earlier and you'll be able to climb right up. And also, if I remember right, I'm pretty sure there's a meme room right here if you want to go ahead and take a look. Oh, it's a balcony. Which, uh, leads into nothing. Awesome. Great balcony. I love the view. Alright, once you complete the maze, you are on the final floor, which is very straightforward. Well, go on the right, go on the sides of these steps, because at the top here, you'll notice that they are diverging. And then just jump to victory. Ta-da! That's your second tower down! Two towers down! Back in the win room, you get the Tower Ringer badge. Congratulations. So... We've beaten the second tower. Once again, when you come in here, um, this won't turn green. You have to rejoin to do that. But now it's time for a hard jump to pull off. This was a small jump. This is typical in your um, difficulty jumps, but this isn't. Look how big this jump is. Well, we have to beat the last beginner tower here. Tower of Madness. This is also by Overtune. And, well... This tower is commonly known to be one of the worst towers in Ring 1. I highly agree with this. It's very low quality. Um, not that fun. I'll be honest. But this tower is great. Really great. For, um, new players. <laughs> because it gets them an idea of how bad towers can get. This tower is bad. This will get you used to terrible gameplay. Because you will have no choice but sometimes to be a tower that you don't like. This is a great example of that. This tower has random difficulty spikes, but don't worry. It's a massive jump. I'll get you through it. There's some tricks and stuff. It'll take you time. You will get frustrated. But nonetheless, you will be able to conquer it as long as you go ahead and push your way through. The tower starts off with those wraparounds again from Tower of Anger. Please do it the good way. You can do it this way. It's way easier. But try to get this ingrained in your muscle memory. It will make it way easier when you go into thicker wraparounds. When you get to these, though, I just recommend you walk across. And you're already on floor two. This is the first time you'll notice a whole bunch of kill bricks in one succession. Keep your eye on your health. This is where your health is, all the way up here. If that goes all the way down, well, you get killed. You're dead. And it's just the way it ends. So be careful. You need to make, keep yourself in check. 
And here's the same part from Anger again, but with longer jumps. Need to get right to the edge every time. Highly would recommend you rush those. Because these do swing and go crazy. Once again, if they go too crazy, just restart your run by going into the menu or holding R. When you get onto this ladder, just hold W and walk in. Nothing else. And then do these again. Let's say, oops, I fell. Don't jump. Go ahead and walk on that kill brick is what I recommend you do. Get, get back up here and heal. You're going to lose a bunch of health, but you're going to hit... If you hit your head on this, it's going to send these out of control, and it's going to make your time even worse. So be careful. <laughs> That's a wall hop skip if you're a chat enough to pull that off. I uh, highly recommend you don't do that. <laughs> Alright, welcome to floor 3. This is the first floor that's kind of annoying in this tower. Um, so this, you have quite a few choices to do. First thing you do is you jump into here. And now you have some choices to make. Remember that tower jump I was talking to you about that you'll see? Well, here's your first instance of it. You can do this and jump right up to here, and then you can go ahead and complete the rest of the part. But, you also have another choice that you can make. Follow me. You can go from this stun and wrap around to here as well. You can do this, try to do this part fully legitimately, but getting on that stud there is really difficult for new players. And, well, it will take your health a lot. So, you can just do that wraparound as well if that one for some reason is hard for you. But no matter which one of the three or four methods, whatever it was, does, you'll get sent into this part. This is where you want to go. You'll get in here. Uh, that is one way you can do it. Get to the edge, jump, and then you can climb up. But you can always just go ahead and do that as well. Keep an eye on your health here. It's very easy to die if for not being careful. Here what I recommend you do is get to the edge, jump, then tap W and you can climb up. If you find that hard and keep uh, failing it, just go ahead and do this part normally. Um, go ahead and walk down and then jump late. Get on top of the ladder and then jump up. So, you get to the edge here. Press space and D or whatever, and you'll be able to get through here. So now, here's another thing that new players will do. They'll go through here and be like, Oh, okay, we're gonna go ahead and do this. No, don't do this. Not because it's hard, but because you can skip this entire floor. Right here. There's a ladder behind there, so once you jump up there, past that jump, go back there. Don't do the fourth floor. Walk up here, and you want to have your head one stud below. So notice how I have a, a whole stud above me. Press space, and you'll land right on this platform you can barely see. This floor is going to suck for um, for you. It's going to suck. So what I recommend you do is do a tower jump here. You'll climb right up once. You can do a second one, but this one can put you into a climb up position. Um, let me try to go ahead and get that for you. So, you might get into this animation. If you do, try and get off of it. If you fall, you'll get sent right back to the ladder from here. Don't worry about that. Go up twice, and then head to the left. If you want to do this method. So, this is how most people do this. What you need to do is go into shift lock, look towards tower stress. This is tower stress. Look a little bit left from that, and then you just do A, get to the edge, space. You might need to tap W to get closer and stuff. It might take you a bit. You can also get to the edge like this and jump up like this as well. This is another option that also works. But, if this is hard for you, you can go ahead and do this entire walking simulator. It takes a lot of time, and jumping some of these jump transitions can be extremely difficult. So I highly recommend that you don't do this walking simulator. You're only going to go ahead and make yourself suffer even more than you need to. Even it, though you will fall quite a bit and take a while to get used to it, either do this or the shift block method. Whatever is more comfortable for you. That's for you to figure out. It will take you some attempts to get past this floor. I am aware of that. It's annoying. But when you get past there, don't get into the climate position there. 
Just go ahead and walk around. Unless you know how to do two sub climb ups, which at this stage you probably don't. La dee da, I'm on floor six. I'm having a great time. I finally am getting some good progress. Ha! Ah, oh no! It's an outside part! Yeah, remember that outside part on Toast? Well, it's back, and here's your first one to worry about. These suckers move quite a bit. You'll notice that. Get to the right side, pretend they don't even move. Get on the right side. I say that because of this jump right here. And then, you can just jump out. Very short outside section. You might fall there a few times. Get used to those outside sections. It takes you quite a bit to get used to them. Alright, so when you get to the end of floor 7, you get to this part. This is why everybody hates this tower. Because of this section. So, what you're going to want to probably try to do is face forward and do it like this. No! Don't do that! Shift lock. Look toward the wall and go this way. You have a lot more lee room. Like, look at this. My entire foot is off. You can actually, like, go very far off. As long as a small part of your foot is here, you're able to stand on the block. If you go this way, you have way less li lee room. Look this way. Press space and D at the same time. Take it easy. Walk down for that one. Don't press space. Space D. Walk down from that one. Space D. Walk down. Space D. Space D again. Walk down. Space D. When it gets here, walk into this. Space D again. Space D again. You'll need to flip mid-air, which might be hard. If you fail that part, you'll have that you have that below you. And then you did it. Space W again on top of this. You can do these one stud wraparounds if you want, but because of the spinners or the uh, platforms, it's really hard to do them. This is lower, so you can wait later to press W. Like, listen, space W, space W, space W. You can do them pretty late compared to normal. Then you have this. Jump up, and then, boom, get on this spinner. Once you get on this spinner, you pretty much have beaten the entire tower. So yeah, don't worry about it. Once you pass that part, it's pretty much over. You get to this part here. Which, yeah, as long as you don't press space on a truss, you're not going to fall. And then, you get into floor 9, which is literally, or 9 and 10, which is literally just this for the rest of the floor. So once when you pass that very hard section at the end of 7 into the beginning of 8, um, I'll explain how, what floors are and stuff in a little bit. Once you do that, you are able to traverse here just fine. Ah, if you ever go into a truss like this, and you notice you're in the wrong way, just get out of it. Especially if you're safety netted like that. But yeah, here's 410. Very hard, guys. Like, this is really hard. It's, like, way harder than Toast gameplay. But once you do, get to the top. Which takes a little bit. Ta-da! Congratulations. Boom! You're gonna get swarmed with another cosmetic notification. Two badges. You have unlocked the medium trail. It's a medium difficulty tower. Remember? Now you got the medium trail, which is a yellow trail because it's a uh, yellow difficulty. So yeah, there it is. So congratulations, you have beaten your third tower. It has been a huge piece of work. It probably was really hard for you because yeah, it is a really hard tower. So now, you're going to head into this green brick, right? And then you're going to go ahead and head over to the difficulty chart and go... Oh, okay, so the next tower I gotta do is T. Okay, let's go in and- No! Don't do that. You see, you know when I said that the difficulty chart sometimes lies to you? Well, this is a time where it does. TOH is way easier than TOK. So you want to do TOH first before TOK. But, we're not going to even be in Ring 1 anymore. You see, we have to go somewhere else now. So follow me. Walk down. This is spawn. This is where you spawn in. I'm gonna walk over here and um, head down the path. Then you'll be able to get an even better view of Ring 1 if you want to take a nice look at it, if you haven't already. And then you're gonna walk over here. And you're gonna notice that there's a little platform here. Fall down. Fall down, land on it, and do this obby. When you get to here, you can jump down to here. And then you want to head into here. 
it'll say next stop Forgotten Ridge. Well, what does this do? Well, if you head into here and press the button, the store will open. And this um, cart thing, if you want to call it that, is going to start moving. So, after a very long time or so, you'll be teleported over to the Forgotten Ridge. Alright, so now we're in the Forgotten Ridge. So, here we are. Just wait to be teleported in and... Well, where the heck am I? This ain't Ring 1. The cart's here and stuff. What is this? Well, let's head over to the Forgotten Ridge sign up here and it'll explain to us what's going on. Welcome to the Forgotten Ridge. This is a desolate region of the Inferno that you've managed to stumble upon. If this is your first ever sub-realm, you may notice that some of the towers look a bit shorter. These are called sepals. They range from 5 to 6 floors on average and normally don't take as long as a regular tower does. Sub-realms may have a reward for beating every tower or may award tower points. So what are you waiting for? Go beat all the towers in the sub-realm and good luck. So yeah, the sign is not lying. If you notice, whoa, what's that? That looks way shorter than this. Whoa, what the heck is that? That thing's really tall, so let me explain. So the way that this game works is towers are considered a 100 by 100 box with 10 floors. Steeples are a 100 by 100 box that with 5 or 6 floors. The way you can tell what a floor is is, well, you can look at it and figure it out. Notice how the color changes drastically as you go up. Each of that's a floor. So this is a floor, that's a floor, that's a floor, that's a floor. And then this is floor 1, floor 2, floor 3, floor 4, floor 5, and then there's floor 6. And then towers have 10. So if you're ever like, oh, I want to know how far I am, just go ahead and look at the frame and it's like, oh, I'm here. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm on floor 5. So yeah, that's how the floor system works. So if we head to the difficulty chart here, notice how SOLW is way lower than the Tower of Killjoys and Heck on the Ring 1 chart? Well, that's what we're looking for. And the great news is that this is actually overrated on the chart. Many people think this is actually not even a hard difficulty thing, which is going to really help us. Because remember, in order to get into Ring 2, you have to go ahead and beat a hard difficulty thing. And that's what we're going to try and do. We're going to do SOLW to go ahead and fulfill that. So let me turn off my trail here. I don't know why I kept that on. So yeah, if you head over here, so if this is the chart, that's where you enter. Head down there and you'll head to the intermediate towers. But before we do, let me go ahead and show you something. When we head back to the ring select, you don't have to take this cart right every time. And also, since now that I have done the um, badge check, it's going to go really quick. Notice how there's now a Forgotten Ridge thing here. Yeah, the, the floating orbs that you may have seen in the ring select, those signify there's a sub-realm there. Once you go to that sub-realm once, you are able to go ahead and unlock it. And then whenever you want to go back to Forgotten Ridge, if you're in Ring 1 or whatever, you can go back, you can do the obby, or if you're anywhere else, just go into Ring Select and then just click it, or tap it, and boom! We're right back where we are. We don't have to do that cart right again. And if you ever want to go back to Ring 1, of course you can go into Ring Select, or you can press this button and take a ride back. So yeah, now back to what we are trying to do, and that's trying to be S-L-O-S-L, S-O-L-W, in the intermediate section. I know you're going to be really tempted to go, oh, okay, I got to go ahead and be, um, S-O-M-D, T-O-G, D, uh, T-O, no, don't do that. The thing is, even if you get four tower points, which is what we need, you can't unlock- you can't go to the second ring yet, because you don't have S-O-L-W unlocked. I don't know what- beaten. You don't have anything that's hard difficulty done, so you can't enter it. So, you're gonna walk down the path here. Once again, once you enter, head to your right. And you will walk down here, into the intermediate section. And here it is. Steeple of Low Woe by 3XW. So this is a five floor steeple, and the best part about this steeple is it is extremely short. This does have some more complicated jumps, like you probably, these jumps are gonna be kind of weird for you. And you, like, look, that's like a weird wraparound, what's that? So this might take you a little bit to get used to, but the good news is the gameplay is overall very short. 
And, well, if you get mad, remember, you only have half the floors, and the, the gameplay overall is extremely short, so. Like, I'm just playing this casually, 30 seconds in, we're already on the second floor. It's that quick. So, just like normal, I'm gonna go ahead and share you um, some spots that may juke you out. And, well, as always, make sure to look in the description if you're stuck at a section I don't mention. Alright, once we get to the beginning of floor 3 here... Uh-oh, it's that 4x4 four four thing again. Ah, there it is. There's a moving platform here, so be careful. Another tip I have is if you come here onto floor 3 and see that this is sitting on the bottom position, like it is now, sit and wait, because you might jump onto it. And see how it went up as soon as I was about to jump onto it? Yeah, you can fall that way and you'll be really mad when you do that. So yeah, please sit and wait for these things. Be patient. Remember, time isn't of the issue here. When you get to here as well, this might confuse you. Go on the top spinner. And then you can just ride it to the other side. It's kind of like a weird little mind trick that um, the creator tried to do to you. You know when I said you were going to come across sticker wraparounds? Well, here's a three stud one. Treat. You can not do. It's really hard to do it this way. It's going to be much harder and stuff. So please, learn how to do it this way. And yes, this is a can't glide false, so you can just go right through that block. You don't have to worry about it. When you get here, I recommend you look toward the wall and go right in the middle because, see, if you're on the sides there, you're going to get hit. Now when you get here, you're going to be tempted to jump from here right to there. Don't do this. You want to go further down, and then jump. Further down, then jump. That will avoid you from hitting your head and then falling through the crack. So you may notice this will, is this wraparound here is a cylinder. Once again, just treat this like a normal wraparound. You don't need to worry about it. It's just rounded, so if you haven't learned how to do your wraps this way yet, it's going to be a little bit trickier. Yeah, it's going to be way trickier to do it that way. So please, try and... I've said that a lot. Please try to get that down. You're going to already get to the point of the game where you need to get that down. When you get to here, um, these suckers move around. Simply just take it slow. Don't worry about it. These are like the road platforms from before. You'll need to maneuver and it'll take some time, but just take your time and uh, you'll be able to get through there just fine. You don't need to worry about it. This might confuse you here. Um, don't worry about it. These transparent platforms, you can walk on them. You don't need to worry about this area at all. When you get to here, though, you have to climb up the truss. I know it, the truss looks a little weird, but yeah, you can climb up the truss when it's at a heavy angle like that. So, Just be careful. Alright, so when you make it to floor 5, it'll tell you to, to avoid the transparent platforms as you will fall through them. Yeah, that is a, that is true. Make sure you don't touch any transparent platforms, but they can be used like this to kind of mess with your mind. And, oh my god, I did not notice that was there. Well, that was embarrassing. Alright, now we're back at floor 5. Let's uh, not be an idiot and try that again. So, you want to stay on the blocks that aren't transparent here, and sometimes you can... They will um, be tricks to try and mess with you. So keep your eye out. And I'm also showing you the way here. Ah, when you get here, this is going to confuse you. These are called walk-arounds. So essentially what you do is you hold W and rotate yourself around. You can hold up. So basically what you, I recommend you do is hold up to W at this angle and then hold W and then A. And then rotate your camera around. You'll be able to walk around. Once again, that's another trick one. Now, three stud head hitter jump. Remember, you got to go very late there. And then once again, it's another walk around. You might fall there a bit. It's your first time ever coming across those things. So yeah, do be careful of that. Take your time. Okay, this is a conveyor. That is, um, there's a block there. So you want to head onto the left side. I also recommend you hold W so you get a bit of time there. Just don't jump too early. It might take you a bit to get used to that. Then you have some jumps here. You can get on top through there. And now you have one last jump and then you have this spinner. Make sure you go on this half of it. And boom! You beat something that's hard difficulty. Booyah! You have unlocked the hard trail. You can equip it in the cosmetic section of the menu. So now... 
You have beaten your first hard tower and gotten Steeple of Lowell. We're at four points. Let's go ahead and read the message. Oh, nice. Uh, oh. Oh. You may have noticed you gained tower points upon being the towers here. With Steeple's giving half a point? But I only have four towers. That means I have Ring 2 unlocked, right? No. Unfortunately, this is a mechanic that is extremely confusing. Towers and tower points are completely different. So, as you'll notice, it'll say towers beaten four, but I can't enter Ring 2. I've beaten four towers, it says, and one hard difficulty tower. But if you put your mouse over it, look. Or hold, I believe if you hold this onto this on mobile, it'll also show up. Look, it says 3.5 points. So this means that I only have three and a half points to the game, which means I can't enter Ring 2. No problem. Head back to Forgotten Ridge. So, after you beat and eat that um, hard difficulty, you still have one last thing to do. And also, if you want to see, this is what the hard trail looks like. It's very dim. But if you come to the chart, you'll notice that there is a very low easy difficulty steeple. SOMD. This will give us the final half point that we need in order to finally be able to access Ring 2. So here it is, Staple of Meaningless Decisions by the Burbs Word and Zolpiz. So, this staple is pretty easy, but it's going to have some mechanics and stuff that might juke you out, so stay tuned. There, there are some areas in this that control you, like for example this platform, which you have to swing up and down using momentum to get on top of. So the way you do momentum is that you, you push back. Hold on, let me reset this so I can uh, give you a better example. So when you get to this, what you're supposed to do is drop down as soon as it's all the way down at this peak, then go back to the other side like I just did, and you'll climb right up. Now make sure you press this button like I did, and this section is timed. So you will have to try and go through here a little bit quick, but... It's not too bad. I don't think this timer is that tight at all. Yeah, I had like eight seconds left, so just keep yourself in check when you do that. All right, when you get to this section, follow this path. The other path is Can't Glide Fall. See how my camera goes through there? That means if I went to into that part, I would fall through it, so keep that in mind. Be very careful of weird tricks. And here's a conveyor section. Just look forward and hold W in space. You'll go through there just fine. Now when you get to here, you'll notice this. Yeah, this part's gonna be really hard for you. So what you do, use your alignment keys to make sure you're facing the wall. If you don't remember, it's the it's the um, greater than and less than keys. So you face this wall. And then you have to, like, mirror yourself on this jump, so... Jump to here, jump to here, jump to here, and it gets to the edge and jump up. So this is what you call a, um, it's a shadow platform area section here. So yeah, this area will be confusing. It's basically, yeah, you look at the wall, and that's where you need to land, pretty much. If you, you can't jump onto this wall, but I think you understand what I mean. Be very careful of that. Yeah. Be very careful of that tilting platform. This can't, this sucker can't... As you saw, I almost got screwed with this thing. Slowly tap yourself forward and then jump off. <laughs> Be very careful of that. Same with that one as well. So you might be asking what are these things. These are actually just jump pads. That are the older versions. So they act a little bit weird. But just these are just jump pads. No need to really worry about that part. It's not too hard, but maybe the first one can be tricky. So just do be careful of that. When you get to this ladder, you might get a bit confused, but you're actually supposed to just jump up the sides like that. Now, always keep yourself in check, because look, this is a moving platform, even though this isn't 4x4. So, make sure you're always checking your surroundings. When you get onto this, make sure you get towards the middle and don't move, because as you can see, it does push you around a little bit, so do be careful. It's a very easy way to get messed up. I think you get the get-go by now. Just simply jump on these 
The ones that aren't transparent. You might get confused at this section because of the blocks spinning. Don't worry about it. Just pretend that the blocks aren't spinning at all. Just pretend it's just a normal spinner. You'll get through there no problem at all. No need to worry. And as you can see, this is another time button section, but you really don't need to worry about the time as you just saw there. So, do be um, a little bit conscious of that. Now, when you get to the top, after this last um, section here, you're going to be brought with this. It says, this is it. Now is when you make your choice. There's no going back from this now. Well, actually, I guess you could tempt it uh, some other time. So, you'll be given a choice whether to do a challenge or not. Do not do this challenge. This challenge makes this steeple way harder, and you're only going to give yourself more annoying, um, a more annoying thing out of it. So, do not do that challenge. If you go in there, you pretty much just have to go ahead and do it again. So, just fall into here. And the wind pad is sitting right there. Now, this is the challenge area itself, so you can take a look at this and see that this is a little bit haunting. Just go in here, and you have beaten the um, steeple of meaningless decisions. And with this, it will say you have five towers, but upon going back to the hub and into the ring select itself, you will notice that, congratulations, you have unlocked ring two you'll even get this badge called gifted and you are able to go into the second ring so huge congratulations this is what the second ring looks like here's the chart and stuff and yeah we're gonna talk about this ring and stuff in the next episode of the beginner's guide where in the begin in the second episode of the beginner's guide i'll be taking you through rings two and three to be able to unlock to allow you to unlock the fourth ring we're there it's up to you from there. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Logan ISO, and I'll see you all later.